वेलकम टू नेटवर्क नेट्स यूट्यूब चैनल आई एम आलोक श्रीवास्तव एंड इन दिस वीडियो आई एम गोइंग टू टेल यू व्हाई कुबर्नेटिस इज इंपॉर्टेंट फॉर ऑल सिसमेंट्स so before we i jump on to the kubernetes that why the kubernetes is important we need to uh, to understand a very basic thing that how the applications are shifting from a monolithic application to microservices and to cloud native applications so every sysadmin should have a very clear understanding of these three different architectures how the applications are getting created so first uh, let me explain you what is a monolithic application now when i say monolithic application that means the legacy way of uh, installing the applications and creating the applications like uh, if you are coming from a windows background you you might have installed uh, say applications like ms office photoshop what do you have to do there is a big bulky binary of say photoshop right a exe file or a msi file you just do a double click and the application get extracted right so the, everything about the photoshop is in the single package right uh, i'll give you one simple example let let's say okay let me use this help of this coaster from red hat say so this is the application right a application consists of many features so here it is so applications consist of many features say if i take a photoshop let's take an example of photoshop of or, or apache or word anything so earlier the applications were monolithic that means some part of the code of the of the application might be responsible for saving the files okay it goes here some part of the application might be responsible for taking the printouts it goes here so it's a service a application consists of multiple services right uh, say print is a, uh, uh, like is a service save is a service formatting is a service then certain part of the code might be responsible for converting it into the pdf certain part of the code will be responsible for alignment certain piece of the code might be responsible for uh, auto like your uh, dictionary checks <laughs> in case of ms word and certain piece of the code might be be say responsible for plugins uh, you add some pictures so the whole application is this they they combine all the services into a single binary a single heavy binary right and they convert it into a exe or a, or a msi file this is a monolithic application now the whole application need to sit on a single machine you need to install it on a single machine another uh, feature i would not say problem that the whole all the piece of all the services need to be written in a single language right so if i am using c++ let's say for writing this application the monolithic application every piece of code will be in c++ i cannot do it that okay this i will write in java this i will write in node js this i will write in c++ i i cannot do that whole application uses a single language they combine it all the features compile it into a single binary and then install it on a machine now the application is running here this is a, mono, a monolithic app, uh, application the way we used to do yum install httpd the whole binary got extracted and we do it what's the problem it seems good the problem is that in case i need to change something let's suppose the print service need to be changed there is something i need to add more features more features so i just cannot take out the print service and uh, re recreate the code update the code and then add it no right i hope you are uh, you understand what's the problem i need to take out the whole all the services right update the one which i wanted to update and then recompile them all together like like shifting the cards right re uh, recompile them there might be a compatibility issue of the new feature with the old with other services which are running with the old features there might be and then i had to recompile it again into the big bulky binary right the whole binary goes into a single file 
all the services goes into a single file, compile it and run it on the machine. So these were the features of monolithic applications and it's, it sits on this machine. Let's suppose this application is uh, sitting on this machine. So this machine has got a finite amount of CPU, finite amount of RAM. So if the load increases, the number of hits increases or the load increases beyond the capacity of the machine, I had to create another server or bring in another server and then install it there. So there is no horizontal scaling. So and the development was slow and we had to use a single language to do it. That is the monolithic application. So development uh, becomes slower. It becomes uh, difficult uh, for me to scale every time I need to do. I need to add up, uh, bring up a new server there. It might require a downtime when I am moving from version one to version two. So these challenges were there with the monolithic applications. That is the monolithic applications, the legacy way of installing the applications and we are sysadmin guys. One of our important job is to make sure that the application is running successfully. So if it is a monolithic application, it, it was very easy for me to install application. Yum install STDB, boom, because everything is running on this single machine. So I need not to learn any special skills, but now the things are changing. Things are changing from monolithic application to microservices. Now let's understand what is a microservice. So a microservice means the same application, but a different approach. So what we had done actually is we had used the approach of divide and conquer. So instead of compiling all the services into a single binary, I say, hey, leave it, throw it away. Right now, microservices means containers. You are here in containers. So every piece of code is not capable of running independently, right? I need not to compile them into a single binary. Second, very important thing is it allows me polyglot programming. Poly, uh, the meaning of polyglot programming is suppose I'm running, uh, creating application for the users, right? So the UI, the, the, the interface, I say, hey, Node.js is the best technology to uh, create the interfaces, right? So I can create the front end using Node.js. Certain piece of the code, which might be doing some calculations, some memory intensive things. So that piece of code, I say, okay, C++ is good with interacting with the hardware. So let's write this piece of code in C++. Got it? Okay, certain piece is good in, in .NET. Wow, means I can combine Linux and the Windows. So I can write certain piece of the code in .NET. I can write some alerts things. Okay, JavaScript will be good for this. Okay, let's write this in the JavaScript, this in Java. So I can use different programming languages for the application. We call it polyglot programming. So that is available with microservices. So now, they might run on a single machine, right? Or they might run on different machines. But then how these two communicate if they are running on different machines? They communicate using the APIs, normally over HTTP, HTTPS. Sometimes they might use uh, like the message broker services like ActiveMQ or Kafka. So uh, they communicate. So a Windows service can communicate with a Linux service. A Linux service can communicate with a Node.js service. Wonderful. And so they might be running on a single machine, all right. Everything is going onto this single machine. Perfect. That is a microservice. So we divided the business application into small, small things. And we have the benefit of using the best technology for a particular job, right? That is not possible in case of the micro, uh, in case of the monolith, the monolithic applications. Now, so all these services, combined together to give make an application. So that is microservice, that is containers. Wow, that means now you have to learn containers. Docker or Podman, any container engine, any container technologies, you have to learn because you won't be seeing the application in a monolithic way. You will be seeing it in a microservices way. So this is microservice. Different uh, 
languages can be used and they can run either on a single machine or on the different machine now there is a problem so let's suppose these services are running on two machines let's say right three three are running on this machine let's say and three services are running on this machine let's say right there are two different machines and they will be able to talk now or they might be running on a single machine but they are different applications right now what will happen if after the compute exhausted what will happen if there is too much load coming up for the print jobs so i need to scale this service so there is a finite amount of cpu there right so in this case if you are using an on-prem setup on-premises setup i need to manually introduce a server right i need to manually introduce a server install the applications there and then do a okay these three will run here these three will run run here the point is that whenever you hit the saturation of the hardware you need to manually bring in a physical server make it a part of the cluster and do it take time now we move to the third section cloud native applications when I say cloud native application, normally people uh, think that the microservices and the, and the cloud native applications are same. They are same, but they are not same. Cloud native application leverages the benefits which are given to you by the cloud service providers like Amazon Web Services, uh, Microsoft Azure, Google Cloud. So they say, hey, let the cloud service provider take care of the infrastructure, underlying infrastructure. I will not be manually adding the servers. And my application should be able to scale up, scale down as the load increase or decrease. And even not only the instances of the application, if this hardware is getting uh, reaching its saturation limit, I should be able to create new hardware automatically. I should not be doing it manually, which I am doing it in an on-prem setup. So now the microservices are combined. They wanted to get the best out of the cloud service infrastructure. Like we have things like auto scaling groups. If you are coming from an Amazon Web Services background or any other cloud service providers, that means say I am I am running three servers, right? I am running these three servers. The moment these three and we have got a lot of microservices running here. And in case the, they hit the saturation, the fourth server will automatically be created and it will automatically become a part of the cluster. The application should automatically start putting containers on the fourth, fourth machine. So I need an application for that. Who should be able to do it? Kubernetes. Here comes Kubernetes. So Kubernetes is an orchestrator. It's a cluster service which helps you manage the microservices. Please understand this, which helps you manage the microservices on a cloud infrastructure it can be private cloud it can be public cloud it can be hybrid cloud so managing uh, microservices on a single machine is a different thing but managing thousands of containers which are spanned across multiple workers or the nodes is a different thing i need i don't want it to spend my time building the infrastructure so let that job should be taken care by the cloud service provider so the infrastructure is given by the cloud service provider right and the microservices are running here and managing those microservices are being done by the kubernetes scaling up scaling down roll back roll down joining the cluster so a lot of things work together so in this scenario we might have the linux working together right with the configuration management tool like ansible we might have the packer in place which is building the golden images so that when the new server got integrated or added into the cluster it will already have the docker installed and all the packages installed i need not to do it manually right and then finally and then finally we have the kubernetes which is managing those applications that's the idea guys so you will not be getting applications in a monolithic way and companies are migrating to cloud. So cloud native applications, right? Microservices, which supports the cloud platform, 
which gets the benefit, the best out of the cloud platforms like auto scaling groups so that the infrastructure is automatically created and reduced whenever the load increase, I need not to do it manually. That is where the Kubernetes actually comes into the picture. So you should have a very clear understanding of monolithic applications, microservices and cloud native applications. When you must have heard, like heard about CNCF. CNCF is what cloud native applications. It is so Kubernetes is a application which manages or is efficient in handling the containers running on a cloud platform. That is why you should learn Kubernetes. I hope I am able to explain you, you the things in a very clear manner and that will help you taking the right decision. Thank you very much. I'll see you soon. Take care guys. Bye-bye. Godspeed.